Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Office, Office Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. A dark cubic room, several dozen meters across, with a lone table and chair at the center. The furniture is illuminated by a round beam of light from above. A massive being, three meters tall, walks into the spotlight. Metal skin shines in the light as the creature descends upon the chair. Four incredibly powerful limbs are laid out in the open on the table as the creature leans back. Dozens of sensors watch the being. Far away, a speaker comes alive. Counselor 1. This is debriefing one of the Vanguard 2 expedition into the beyond. Congratulations on your successful decontamination, Captain. Your continued existence is a pleasant surprise to us all. For the record, please state the mission objective of your command, Captain. Captain. Thank you, Counselor. I am glad to be here. My mission, as of that of my crew and my ship, was the investigation of the signal source discovered by the Vanguard 1 expedition beyond the Aegis Zone. Counselor 1. Excellent, Captain, but first the Aegis Zone awaits your word on the Endless Theorem was... <clears throat> was the Theorem confirmed? Captain. Yes. Counsel. Varying gasps of fear are cut off by the microphone being muted. Captain, after several seconds of pause. The rate of anomalies grew very closely to the curve predicted by the Endless Theorem. With adjustments to the Vanguard 1 mission... In short, the further away we got from the galactic center, the worse it got. There was no end. Counselor 2, suppressing panic tones. Please, Captain, start from the beginning. Captain. The Vanguard, repaired after the first voyage, first headed down the same route as on the initial expedition. We reached the endpoint of the Vanguard 1 mission without any major incidents. Several anomalies were confirmed in the second pass but the first mission allowed us to avoid the worst of the catastrophes. Not a single crew was lost, we confirmed the signal, and with the new equipment we were able to track its location. Counselor 1. We understand you had an encounter with the Void Creature, the V058. Captain. Yes, the creature did attempt an assault, but we were prepared. The ship's main laser kept it at 12 million kilometers from the ship. We managed to secure an automated beacon with a drone to V058 before V0184 began to swarm the site. Counselor 3. Well done, Captain. That thing has been plaguing the rim of the Aegis zone for too long. Now we will be able to locate it on approach. Captain. V058 is the small one. Counselor 3. What? Captain. As you know... The Aegis Zone extends out 5,000 light years from the galactic center. No civilization has been found beyond the zone, and little returns from it. Vanguard made it out to 9,000 light years before sustaining crippling damage on the first mission. We estimated the signal source to be at 12,000 light years. We were wrong. Upon entering the system we calculated to be the origin of the signal, it went quiet and we were attacked by what we later classified as V058-2. It was a V058, but so, so much larger. We attempted the laser countermeasure, but it failed. I managed an emergency jump before the whole ship fell to the panic effect. The jump took us even further away from the Aegis Zone. We soon learned that V058-2 was not limited to its star system like V058. We think it learned and emulated our jump drive and followed us into the system, forcing us to jump again, even further out. I made attempts to circle around V058-2 and return to the Aegis Zone, but found two more, V058-3 and V058-4, flanking us. They were positioned to force us further away from the zone. We fled as fast as that jump drive permitted. The fear effect was constant now. Though, perhaps it was our natural emotions at play, rather than the creature's effect. Counselor 4. Have you considered that by attempting to return to the Aegis Zone, you would show V058-2 the way to us? Captain. I believe we have the defense fleet for exactly that reason, Counselor. Counselor 1. Continue, Captain. Captain. The anomaly rate grew with every jump. First, the little harmless things. Then, at 15,000 light-years, one of the main turret computers became possessed. 
It started singing on the intercom. The noise nearly drove us mad until we found the source core and destroyed it. At 17,000 light years, something attached to the ship. We sent several technicians out to remove it, but none returned. Whatever it was began to speak in their voices through the hull armor, begging others for help, asking them to come out. We had to seal off that entire section of the ship. No matter how much we looked with the drones, we couldn't find it. At 18,000 light years from the core, we jumped too close to a supergiant star and began to burn up. I ordered the Vanguard to maneuver towards a lone planet into the shade, but the closer we got, the larger the star became. It warped around us. The closer we got, the more the star surrounded us, taking up four-fifths of the sky before I turned the ship around. We had to stop and repair after that, and V058-2 almost caught us. This far out, it actually had a form. I would rather not remember it. We sent half our drones ahead at that point looking for an escape and continued fleeing. Almost every day now something happened. A tanker of water got contaminated by some sort of plant. It grew throughout the ship, into the engineering and crawl spaces, through the computers. The troops tried to burn it, but it grew back too fast. We thought it was the end of us, but the plant stopped growing after it spread throughout the whole ship. We found everything worked better now. Our jump range was increased by over 20%. The reactor put out that much more. It was a miracle, and it let us stay ahead of V058-2, V058-3, and V058-4. At 20,000 light years, every system we jumped to demonstrated mimetic properties. Internal cameras showed shadows wandering the halls. Corpses where none existed. We recorded hundreds of anomalies within the ship and thousands beyond it. Out of the crew was already dead, a victim of one such anomaly or another. Then, one of the probes detected the signal. C2 in a quiet, panicked tone. Wasn't the signal allure of V058-2? Captain. We thought so too. We veered away from it, but V058-3 nearly caught us. Of the ten drones we sent to the signal, only two returned, but... But we found a civilization. Council. Indistinguishable laughter, screaming, yelling, questions, and exclamations can be heard. Several minutes pass before Councillor 1 forces order over the council. Councillor 1. Continue, Captain. Please. Captain. We could not believe it. If we could not trust our own internal cameras, our own eyes, then how could we trust this? But we had no choice. At 21,000 light years, an engineer went mad and unsealed one of the antimatter storage tanks. Except, there was no longer antimatter inside. Only some sort of black liquid. It ate the engineer. We ejected the whole section and blew it up with the last functioning weapons. That's when we realized most of our senses were blind. We couldn't see further than a few kilometers with anything but optics. The growth that spread through the ship earlier and allowed us to outjump V058-2 suddenly died, disabling everything. Life support, power, engines, shields. For cycles, we, what remained of the crew, worked to fix the reactor and jump drive. The whole ship was dark, infested with things that should never be. The dark, it was full of... The metal table folds under the captain's flexed fingers. He exhales, regaining control. V058-2 nearly caught us. We jumped out so close half of the surviving crew blanked from the fear. And we kept jumping, with just a secondary reactor, damaged jump drive, and a portable computer. We had nowhere to go but the signal source. The navigational sensors gave out, but we estimate the signal originated 25,000 light years from the galactic center. The system had a single habitable planet, and to our amazement, it was occupied. Councilor 3. Impossible. Nothing could have evolved that far out from the Aegis Zone. The anomalies wouldn't have led it. According to the Endless Theorem, the planet would be flooded with high-class anomalies at that distance from the core. Captain. It was. And they survived anyway. Councilor 4. How? Captain. There were 40 of us left, a hundredth of the original crew. But we had one functional computer and limited rocket thrusters. On the last of the fuel, we entered orbit around that green planet and repurposed the computer in an attempt to establish contact. 
We managed to decode their languages, connect to their worldwide network, and found nothing. No official mention of anomalies. No mention of the insanity plaguing us this far out. They didn't even see us enter orbit. That's when V058-2, V058-3, and V058-4 caught up. They were physical now. Fully manifested into flesh, bone, and meat, and teeth. And they charged us. That's when the computer found another layer to the planetary electronics network. They had something called the Internet. An information sharing network like our Galnet with several layers underneath. When the V058s entered the system, we detected cause between sites belonging to something called the SCP. When the fear wave hit us, when we gave up, cursing ourselves for bringing death upon this world, we spotted sites on the planet's moon. Counselors, I am sure you are well aware of the vast power of the Defense Fleet's planetary weapons. I myself have seen those great lasers fire in protection of our colonies on the rim. But the weapons on that moon were in a different league entirely. I have never seen something so large die so quickly. Amazingly enough, the weapons firing went unnoticed by the civilization. We understand this organization of theirs edited out any sightings of the beams and the V058s from the planet's sensors. It was as if nothing ever happened below. Only a few SCP ships launched from the moon, collecting samples from V058-2 before it crashed into the local star. Another SCP ship soon made contact with us. Counselor 4. Captain, are you saying these... Captain. Humans, Counselor. Counselor 4. These humans survived out here because of these amazing weapons? That makes no sense. How could they have initially evolved on the world? Captain. That's not at all what I'm saying, Counselor. They did not survive by fighting off the terrors like us. This defense group, the... SCP Foundation, as they call themselves. They do not usually destroy the anomalies, not if they see another option. It is, in fact, in their name. Secure, contain, protect. This civilization, these mad creatures of the beyond, they do not fight the anomalies. They have countless facilities that store the terrors. They live on a planet with more stored monstrosities than the Aegis Zone has ever destroyed. The humans developed an immune system to the beyond, so they would not have to know about the terrors, leaving it to the few of their kind to keep the many safe. They study them like a science, and with that knowledge, they learn to survive against the anomalies. They learn to contain them. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click and click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just quickly like to give thanks to our tier 5 members. Elithia, Barky, Feudicule, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Savage Patch Papa, and Lord Azrakal.